Well, the last few weeks, we've been going over a series that I've entitled, Everyone Has a Past. The basic theme of the series has been that we all have a past, but our past does not disqualify us from having a relationship with Jesus today, and our past doesn't disqualify us from being used by God today. Over the past few weeks, we've discussed that where we were born, the situation we were born into, doesn't disqualify us. We've talked that our choices that we made before we ever came to know the Lord, that they don't disqualify us. We've talked about the fact that those choices that we've made after we came to know the Lord, that those choices don't disqualify us. There's the mercy and the grace of God uh, that we're not disqualified from. We've talked about those moments in life that are, that are tough, that we never really wanted to face, yet it's left us broken. In those moments, they don't disqualify us from having a relationship with Jesus today. And so today I want to talk to you for a few moments about those who are part of another religion. Maybe no religion at all. They have nothing to do with God. And today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the life of Ruth. And what I hope to accomplish here today is that you will realize that no matter what your religious background is, whether you serve God today or not, that by the grace and the mercy of God, that if you will turn to Him today, that your past religious beliefs or your past non-religious beliefs do not disqualify you from having a relationship with Jesus today. So the first thing that we must understand, first and foremost, is that not everybody believes in the Judeo-Christian God. Not everyone believes in Jesus Christ. In Ruth chapter 1, starting at verse 1, it says, In the days when the judges ruled Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him, and the man's name was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi. The two sons were Mahalan and Kilion. They were Ephraites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Then Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. Yet the two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman by the name of Orpah, and the other a woman named Ruth. So here we have Ruth enter onto the scene of Scripture for the first time. So she enters for the very first time, do we see Ruth? Ruth was not an Israelite woman. She was a Moabite. She was not raised to believe and to worship God. She was raised and she was worship, or uh, raised and taught to worship a God by the name of Shemosh. Now, Shemosh might not sound like a very familiar name for us, but there's another name that this god is known by, Moloch. That's a little bit more familiar to us. See, the worship of Moloch was very cruel. In fact, it offered children sacrifice to worship this god. In fact, we have some ancient writings from this Phoetian tablet that explains some of this worship. It says that the image of Moloch was a human figure with a bull's head and outstretched arms, ready to receive the children destined for sacrifice. The image of metal was heated red hot by a fire kindled within, and the children laid on its arms and then rolled off into the fiery pit below. In order to drown out the cries of the victims, flutes were played and drums were beaten. The mother stood by without tears or sobs to give the impression that of the voluntary character of the offering. So you see this culture that Ruth was brought up in. This God that Ruth would have served being from Moab. This was a cruel God. Not only was it a cruel God, but it was far removed from the commandments of God. So now if we jump to Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 1, it says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way that he found there. The way, of course, is Christianity. 
He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So first we had Ruth. Ruth, she was raised not to even believe in this God of Israel. She was raised to to worship a total other God altogether. But now we have Saul, who of course we later know is Paul, the apostle. But Paul, he was raised in a little bit different religious home. See, Jesus Christ had come and died on the cross by this point. But Saul didn't believe that Jesus Christ was God incarnate. In fact, his upbringing, his religious upbringing, actually brought him to this point where he hated Christians. He murdered Christians. But here's Paul. And Jesus' love for Paul, even though Paul wanted to murder Christians, even though Paul wanted nothing to do with Jesus, and in fact hated him with everything that he was, in the midst of it all, Jesus in his love called him out of that. So here you have Ruth, who serves no God at all. Well, not the God of Israel. She serves a false God. She's part of another religion. Then you have Saul, who doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. So he doesn't believe at all in the Christian teachings. See, in our culture, there is more and more people who are serving more and more different gods. There's more and more people day after day who are serving no God at all. But just like Saul and just like Ruth, they must understand that Jesus Christ loves them. And in spite of their past religious beliefs or their past non-religious beliefs, God loves them and wants to call them into a relationship with Him today. See, our past does not disqualify us from this. If you're hearing this today and you have no religious belief or you're hearing this today and you will believe in another God, whether it be Hindu, whether it be Buddhist, whether it be Muslim, you need to understand that Jesus Christ still wants to call you out of that. It does not disqualify you from having a relationship with Jesus today. Anyone, anyone can turn from who they're serving now and turn to the Lord And be saved. See, we can all make this choice to follow God. Everyone. Ruth 1 verse 16 says, But Ruth replied, Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. And listen to this. Your God will be my God. So here's Ruth. She's raised in Moab. They don't believe in the God of the Israelites. They believe in Moash, or Moloch rather. They're serving this false god in a total different culture. But she meets this lovely Israelite man. And she falls in love and they get married. Unfortunately, before she has a chance to have any children, her husband dies. In that culture, that would mean that you would move on to the brother-in-law and he would provide a child. But the brother-in-law dies. And so here is the two sister-in-laws, and now they've gone to live with the mother-in-law, Naomi. But there's this huge famine in the land, and Naomi says, but back home in Israel, God is blessing His people. He is feeding His people. These people are, are, are still continuing to, to live and to, to eat. And so she says, I've got to leave Moab, and I need to go back to my people. So Ruth says to her, she says, I'm going with you. She says, I'm going. But what's incredible is that she says, now your people will be my people and my, your God will be my God. See, right here we see Ruth make a choice. Ruth made a very definite choice here. She said, I am leaving my people. I am leaving that culture. I am leaving that God that they serve. And I am turning and I am now going to serve your God. There was a very definite choice made here. See, in Joshua 24, starting in verse 14, it says, So fear the Lord and serve Him wholeheartedly. 
Put away forever the idols that your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose you today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors? In other words, if you're not going to serve Jesus, are you just going to serve the gods that your family served? If they're involved in some cult that's pseudo-Christian, are you just going to serve in that cult? Are you going to, if your family had no Christian background at all, and no religious background, are you just going to choose not to serve any God at all? He says, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? Are you just going to instead serve who everyone else in our culture is serving? Are you just going to follow along? And if they don't serve a God, then you're not going to serve a God. If they're doing this, then you're going to do this. Joshua saying, choose you this day. Who are you going to serve? He says, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. See, there's a choice that every one of us can make. Are you going to choose to serve the Lord or are you not? Let's say that you're standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon. And, and you're looking over to the other side, and there's this large ravine between you and the other side, and you want to get over there so bad. And so these two guys walk up to you, and they say, Hey, you know, we noticed that you're trying to get over there. We've got options. So the first guy says, Listen, I've got the best option. It's simple. It's easy. It's smooth. What I have here is a bicycle. And on the bicycle attached to the pedals is a propeller. You just simply pedal those pedals, the propeller spins, and you just gently hover across the ravine. You may have seen this in the Roadrunner cartoons. What could possibly go wrong, right? The other man looks at you and says, I have a donkey. He says, this thing is stubborn. It's going to be a rough ride. It is going to give you an awful hard time. But if you follow this path to the bottom, there's another path going up the other side. This donkey is going to fight you the whole way. It's going to be hot and dry, and you may get a bit dehydrated. It's going to be miserable, I'll be honest with you. But I guarantee you'll make it to the other side. you got two choices before you. One sounds really easy, but most certainly will probably lead to your death. The other sounds awful difficult, but in reality, you know that you're going to make her to the other side. Paul said, and... Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. See, no matter what your past is, no matter what your religious upbringing is, we have a choice. Two of them have been set before us. One, you can just continue living the way you're living now. You can live this life and try to find as much enjoyment in it as possible, you can do what you want, and you may go smoothly through this life with no problem. But the Bible says that that leads to certain death. That it leads to hell. Plain and simple. Your other choice, it might not be the easiest choice all the time. It might be a struggle to follow the ways of Christ sometimes. It might mean that some of those relationships that you have get severed. It might mean that some people don't like you. It might mean that sometimes it's going to be tough standing up and doing what you know is right. Even though everyone else is going against it. But the Bible says that if you make that choice to follow Jesus, though this life may be difficult at times, it will lead to life eternal. And a heavenly reward. The choice is before us today. What will you choose? Our past religious beliefs do not disqualify us from having a relationship with Jesus Christ today. There are a lot of people who have been brought up in cults, who claim Christianity, but they don't follow the teachings of the scriptures. There's been many people who've been brought up in different world religions who believe wholeheartedly that what they believe is true, but it's going to lead to death. There are those who don't today believe in any God whatsoever, but the truth is, 
is that again, it's going to lead to death. But the important thing to understand is that our past, no matter how recent it is. See, you could be hearing this today, and one of those situations could be you. But your past does not disqualify you today from a relationship with Jesus. Matthew 1 verse 1 says, This is the record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David and Abraham. You jump to verse 5, and it says, Solomon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of King David, who was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba. So here we have Ruth, a woman who was brought up in a home that served a false god. Had nothing to do with the God of Israel. She meets this man, he dies, she moves to Israel, she meets another man by the name of Boaz. They get married, they have children, and her grandchild ends up being King David, one of the greatest kings Israel ever known. But more importantly, this woman, who for all intents and purposes was nothing more than an idol worshiper, ends up finding herself in the lineage of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I want you to get this. There was millions of good, God-fearing Israelite women living in Israel. They would have been the perfect wife for Boaz, you would think. But God chose a woman who many of us would look at and disqualify her from ever having a relationship with God, let alone the fact that he chose her to be in the lineage of his very own son, Jesus Christ. What an honor that is. What an honor to look in the Bible and find the name Ruth. What an honor that was given to her. I'm going to conclude here. If you have heard this today, and you've been brought up in a home that's not Christian, or you've turned to another belief system, or no belief system at all. You need to realize that this day, you can repent, you can turn to Jesus Christ, and you can be saved. Your past, no matter how recent it is, does not disqualify you from a relationship with Jesus today. Romans 10, starting in verse 9, says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. It is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you're hearing this today and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, most of us here today do. So this applies what I'm about to say to the rest of us here today. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, what Paul says next, this is important for us to understand and heed. In verse 14 he says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him unless if, if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? How can they hear unless someone tells them? We have been speaking for weeks on the fact that our past does not disqualify us from a relationship with Jesus today. We have been talking that repentance, no matter what we have done in the past, no matter what we faced in the past, is the moment we repent and turn to Jesus Christ, we are saved. That is a wonderful gospel message. But how will those outside ever know? 
How will they ever hear? How will they ever hear that there is a peace that can come to their life that they do not understand unless someone tells them? We're concluding this series today. This whole series, the underlying message of this entire series has been the mercy and the grace of God in the importance to let people know that no matter what they've done, that mercy and that grace is for them too. Today, it is time to look beyond our past and it's time to look forward to a relationship with Jesus Christ. If I could have every head bowed and every eye closed, if there is anyone here today Maybe you've turned your back on the Lord. Maybe you've turned to something else. But today you want to say, I will repent. I'm going to serve Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. If that's you, just raise a hand where you're at. Lord, I love you. I believe that this series, Lord, was ordained by you. You've asked me to speak it, and now I've done it. Now, by your Holy Spirit, I pray that you would draw people to you. Lord, I've planted, I've watered, but scriptures say that you give the increase. There's nothing more that I can do, Lord. It's all in your hands. So Jesus, I pray that you would use this message and you would use these past messages and that, Lord, you would draw to you all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, all who have turned from you. And Jesus, draw them into a relationship with you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would convict and you would confirm this message today. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.